Pliny the Younger was a teenager when he witnessed the catastrophic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79, which led to the complete destruction of Pompeii. His uncle perished during the disaster, and Pliny's letters to the historian Tacitus provide the only surviving eyewitness accounts of this monumental and deadly volcanic event. Most of the roughly 2,000 deaths in Pompeii occurred on the second day of the eruption when the summit of Vesuvius collapsed, unleashing a pyroclastic flow, a rapid, lethal surge of scorching volcanic material that swept through the city. The intense heat and force of this flow caused near instantaneous death, which is why the plaster casts of Pompeii's victims appear so lifelike. Additionally, some of the deaths in Pompeii may not have been directly caused by the volcano itself. Pliny noted that the eruption was accompanied by earthquakes, a detail now supported by evidence showing that powerful seismic activity did indeed shake Pompeii during and after the eruption. Pliny reported earthquakes, now confirmed. Pliny was located 18 miles from Mount Vesuvius when the eruption occurred, and he vividly recounted the violent earthquakes that struck during the night and again at dawn on the second day. He wrote that the tremors became so severe that it felt as if everything was not just shaking, but on the verge of overturning. The earthquakes that night were so intense that it seemed as if everything was not only shaking but about to collapse, Pliny observed. He also described how, even though it was the early morning, the light was dim and chariots placed on flat ground were being jolted back and forth, unable to remain steady even when wedged with stones. Until recently, clear archaeological evidence of deaths caused solely by Vesuvian earthquakes at Pompeii was lacking, as the overwhelming destruction from the pyroclastic flow made it difficult to distinguish between damage from the volcanic eruption and that from seismic activity. However, a team of scientists in Italy has uncovered compelling evidence at Pompeii that some victims were killed by a building collapse caused by an earthquake rather than by the heat or asphyxiation from the eruption. This discovery not only validates Pliny's 2,000-year-old account, but may also alter the understanding of the true causes behind the high death toll at Pompeii. Three Phases of Destruction Around 1 p.m. on the first day of the eruption, Mount Vesuvius erupted violently, sending a massive column of volcanic material nearly 20 miles into the atmosphere. This particular type of eruption, later known as a Plinian eruption, is named after Pliny the Younger, who provided a detailed account of the disaster. In this initial phase, Pompeii was bombarded with pumice lapilli, tiny, lightweight stones formed as molten lava rapidly cooled while airborne. Although these pumice stones weren't extremely hot, they rained down on Pompeii for 18 continuous hours, eventually accumulating to a depth of up to 3 meters, or about 9 feet. The weight of these deposits became overwhelming, causing many rooftops to collapse and resulting in numerous fatalities during this first phase of the disaster. As dawn approached on the second day, those who had survived the night experienced a brief moment of calm. For about 30 minutes, the unrelenting downpour of pumice ceased. Some survivors might have taken this opportunity to escape by climbing out of second-floor windows onto the streets, now buried in loose stones and ash. Others remained in their homes, perhaps thinking that the worst was over. But the catastrophe was far from finished. With a renewed explosion, the second phase of the eruption began. This time, it was not a rain of stones, but a deadly pyroclastic flow, a scorching avalanche of gas and volcanic debris moving at high speed. Whether out in the streets or sheltered indoors, the residents of Pompeii had no chance of surviving this lethal onslaught. 
Within a matter of minutes, thousands of Pompeii's inhabitants perished, succumbing to the intense heat, suffocation from ash inhalation, and the sheer destructive force of the pyroclastic surge, which toppled walls and brought entire buildings down. While the majority of Pompeii's victims are believed to have died during this pyroclastic phase, new evidence suggests there was another deadly factor at play. Between the initial pumice fall and the pyroclastic flow, a powerful earthquake, estimated to be as strong as 5.8 on the Richter scale, struck the region, adding another layer of devastation to the city's tragic end. Walls came tumbling down. Pliny documented intense earthquakes that struck overnight and again in the early hours of the second day. Yet archaeological evidence had never clearly supported the idea that these quakes represented a distinct phase of destruction in Pompeii. This is precisely what recent findings suggest may have occurred. The new evidence centers around the discovery of two sets of human remains within the ruins of Pompeii. These two skeletons were unearthed beneath a collapsed wall in a residential structure. The remains appear to belong to two men in their 50s, both of whom sustained multiple severe injuries, including compression fractures to the ribcage, pelvis, limbs and skull. This damage points to a catastrophic event, likely caused by the powerful earthquake rather than the pyroclastic flow alone. Anthropologists have determined that the injuries sustained by the two men are consistent with blunt force trauma, rather than death by asphyxiation or heat. The type of compression fractures observed in the men's rib cages, pelvises, limbs and skulls are strikingly similar to those seen in victims of modern earthquakes. In most instances at Pompeii, Buildings were brought down by the immense force of the pyroclastic flow. However, the collapse of the house where these two men perished deviates from the usual pattern of destruction. Typically, a pyroclastic surge would obliterate or topple a wall upon impact. But in this case, the wall's collapse seems to have been triggered differently. The evidence suggests that the heavy wall was first displaced horizontally by seismic activity violent side-to-side -side shaking before falling and crushing the men. The presence of pumice lapilli on the collapsed wall further supports this, indicating that the wall fell while the lightweight volcanic rocks were still falling from the sky. This sequence aligns with Pliny's account of severe shaking at dawn on the second day of the eruption. The earthquake struck during the tail end of the initial eruption phase when light debris was still raining down, at least 30 minutes before the deadly pyroclastic flow arrived. This suggests that the men were killed by the earthquake, not by the volcano. This discovery is significant, as it marks the first time that a building collapse at Pompeii has been confidently attributed to earthquake activity. Researchers are now searching for more evidence of seismic damage within the ancient city. This finding has also led to a new theory about the fate of Pompeii's 2,000 victims. It's possible that many people survived the initial Plinian phase of the eruption, during which Vesuvius erupted and debris rained down on the city. However, their chances of escaping before the arrival of the pyroclastic flow may have been thwarted by a major earthquake that likely caused widespread building collapses throughout Pompeii. 